Greetings. And welcome to another last day event as they are being fulfilled very rapidly. I was about to say welcome to another Sabbath day. The Sabbath is on my mind. It is Sabbath here, of course, in the UK at this hour. We would like to wish, or I should say, we would like to tell each one of you, especially those who are now, as we are here in the UK, experiencing the Sabbath already, a blessed Sabbath day. Wherever you are joining us at this critical time, we would like to thank you for tuning in on a daily basis to study with us. We are in a spiritual warfare, brothers and sisters, and it is even much clearer now what the enemy's plan is for God's people. We were told these things were going to come down upon those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And God has given us wisdom, his words, spiritual discernments, the understanding of prophetic events, to understand that what we see taking place in our world right now is not by accident, not by coincidence. As the Bible says, Satan knows that he has but a short time. He has a specific group of people that he hates. A group of people, as Spirit of Prophecy describes, that stands in its way of ruling the entire world as he has been wanted to. But for such a time as this, guys, God has raised us. God has given us the understanding for the time. And we need as well to let the world know what the truth is, as it is found in Jesus Christ. Because the world is being bombarded by lies at this moment in time. We'll get into this in a moment. Let's have a word of prayer. Loving Father God, which are in heaven, as we can see, war is raging all around us. Where can we find shelter? Lord, we believe, as your word said, that we can only find shelter in the arms of Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to discern the signs of the times, that it is indeed high time for us to awake out of sleep, for our salvation is nearer than we first believe. We pray for your people right now. We pray for those who are experiencing the Sabbath hours that they will receive a blessing as you have promised, including myself and those who are still in uh, preparation time right now. Be with them in a special way. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. This war will come down to those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. This war I am referring to the war that is taking place right now between Ukraine and Russia. And as we have been looking at, it's going to come down to a World War III. And this is a holy war. Don't be fooled by what the media is telling you right now. This is indeed a holy war. And we as a people not only must be prepared... For this war now to turn up against us because as we can see what's happening right now as they have been telling us about this Fatima prophecy from 1917 that Russia must be consecrated to the so-called Satan which they call Mary and now we are seeing an uprising within the Roman Catholic Church, with zeal and passion, they are rallying the bishops, the priests, the members, the Pope. They said now it is time to consecrate Russia and Ukraine and the entire world to the so-called Immaculate Conception or the Immaculate Heart. What will happen next? It will be us next. If we refuse, as they have done to the Waldensians, if we refuse to accept Mary as a God, 
if we refuse to partake of the Eucharist, yea, if we refuse to keep Sunday holy, it's going to come down to us. Listen to what this says here. The whole world is to be stirred with enmity against Seventh-day Adventists. Why? Because they will not yield homage to the papacy by honoring Sunday, the institution of this anti-Christian power. It is the purpose of Satan to cause Seventh-day Adventists to be blotted from the earth in order that his supremacy of the world may not be disputed. Every position of our truth, oh, keep that in mind. Remember, Jesus says to the Pharisees, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus also says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Well, men are being enslaved right now by lies as we have been exposing the lies that the media has been promoting as a result of this war to make it seem like something horrible is really happening when in reality and this is another thing there the uh, ukrainians uh soldiers and they are coming up with false flag, even killing their own people and then accusing Russia of doing it. Let's continue. It goes on to tell us, every position of truth taken by our people will bear the criticism of the greatest minds. The highest of the world's great men will be brought in contact with truth. Oh, the world needs the truth right now. And therefore, every position we take should be critically examined and tested by the scriptures now we seem to be unnoticed but this will not always be movements are at work to bring us to the front and if our theories of truth can be picked in pieces by historians or the world's greatest men it will be done why will the world be at such enmity with Seventh-day Adventists, against Seventh-day Adventists. Well, we just read it. Because every position of our truth, the truth that God has given unto us, will be criticized by the great man. They will hate the truth. Why? Because we, at the same time, remember, the truth is Jesus, and at the same time, we are exposing the lies. Now, let me play for you a confession here from a journalist as we have been exposing this showing the lies in the media they're telling you one thing this is happening over there in ukraine when in reality that's not the case but now i'm going to allow you to listen and to watch this journalist admitting admitting confessing about those false propaganda those lies and she herself would say that she apologizes for telling this as if it was fact listen carefully well there's no doubt emotions are running very high in the war between russia and ukraine people are upset in shock and disbelief but one thing that isn't helping at all is the unbelievable amount of fake images and videos being spread not only on social media but also by legitimate news outlets i even made the mistake myself here on rising on friday when i stated i was impressed with Zelensky getting into full military gear to fight on the front lines Turns out that was an image from last April. Turns out that was an image from last April. I fell for it. I apologize. I'm telling you this. Now, here comes a journalist. This is a journalist from The Hill. So this is not just a, a small company over there. We're talking about The Hill. That's a big media company. And she is telling you there's a lot of fake news for false information going on with this war that the media cnn bbc and all the others are telling you about that is not fault at all uh, or truth at all and she just said in regard to uh zelensky keep him keep that actor in mind as she showed here on the screen she showed this 
where Zelensky, the hero, or the man of the hour, the one who received a standing ovation from Congress, he geared up and he went into the battlefield when this was all a lie. This picture was not taken or this video or the picture was not taken recently. This was a very old picture. Now I'm going to play another clip for you where she's debunking some news that CNN, BBC and all the rest have been projecting out there as truth to build the case for World War III, III to go against Putin and she says it's all fake news. Listen carefully. Unfortunately, I'm not alone in falling for it. Bild, a political news outlet in Germany, shared a video of what looked to be a horrific bombing by the Russians in Kiev during one of their broadcasts. But it turns out the footage was from a 2015 chemical explosion in Tianjin, China. Newsmax used a photo of a crying older woman standing in front of her devastated home with the caption, the current devastation in Ukraine. But the photo was from 2015. An Italian news broadcast used footage from the video game War Thunder when talking about the war in Ukraine. No doubt viewers seeing a rain of missiles were horrified. So war footage from a video game. And the media is fitting this to you as if it is fact. Why are they doing this, brothers and sisters? Do you see why Seventh-day Adventists will be hated by the world? Because we dare to expose the lies by telling the world the truth. We have the message for this time to expose the wickedness, the lies of the men of sin. Let's continue reading from Spirit of Prophecy here. We must individually know for ourselves what is what, what is truth, and be prepared to give a reason of the hope that we have with meekness and fear, not in a proud, boasting self-sufficiency, but with the Spirit of Christ. We are nearing the time when we shall stand individually alone to answer for our belief. We shall be attacked on every point. We shall be tried to the utmost. We do not want to hold our faith simply because it was handed down to us by our Father. Such a faith will not stand the terrible test that is before us. We want to know why we are Seventh-day Adventists, what real reason we have for coming out from the world as a separate and distinct people. Do you want to be among this group? Oh, ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Why? One of the reasons, one of the main reasons is because we are exposing the lies of the papacy. Those actors are playing us. We just watch the lies they are promoting out there. But on the surface, the actors, Biden, Putin, Zelensky, and the rest, they are talking as if something is really going on, as if they try to understand the mind of Putin. And listen, remember what we just watched there? And listen there, but still listen to the madness there. From the Communist News Network Politics, CNN, March 17, 2022, Biden calls Putin a Watna, a murderous dictator and putog. Wow. A murderous dictator. And we're supposed to believe that, right? That he is indeed a murderous dictator. Remember, they have to condition the mind with lies and to receive the mark of the beast later on. And they are doing such a good job at this. Listen to the lies coming out the mouth of Biden. My generic point is that, you know, uh, now you have Ireland and uh, Great Britain uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the Republic uh, uh, standing together against a murderous dictator, a pure thug who is waging an immoral war against the people of Ukraine. And Putin is paying a, a big price for his aggression. So Putin, Putin is a war uh, monger. 
He is, as Biden says, a dictator and a thug. Again, languages and acting up to build the case against Putin to vindicate a oh, World War III. Well, we have exhausted everything. We tried to reach out to him. We tried to reason with him, but he would not listen. So we had no other option but to liberate, liberate the people of Ukraine. Remember the people of Ukraine? Remember what's over there in Ukraine? Nazi, neo-Nazis. The actors are playing their games. Here is another one here. This is from the Epoch Times, March 17, 2022. Sorrows, worries about Putin Z. That's the uh, president. Z is the president of China. Partnership. Then he says, hopes both leaders can be stopped before they destroy our civilization. Mm -mm -mm. Who is Soros again? <laughs> the man who hates humanity. The man who's been trying to depopulate the earth. One of them. Mm -hmm. A criminal. Now he's saying one more time that he worries about Putin and uh, the Chinese president partnership. Hopes both leaders can be stopped before they destroy our civilization. Which is exactly what they've been trying to do. Destroy the civilization. He spent billions of dollars trying to do just that once again. And I know... I am uh, a marked man for exposing those things, <laughs> brothers and sisters. Do you want to be a seven-day Adventist? By that I mean the ones that Revelation 17 or chapter 12 rather, verse 17 described as the remnant of the seed of the woman. Remember, the dragon hates that remnant. Listen to what we read here. The powers of darkness will open their batteries upon us and all who are indifferent and careless, who have set their affections on their earthly treasure and who have not cared to understand God's dealings with his people will be ready victims. No power but a knowledge of what again? The truth as it is in Jesus will ever make us step fast. But with this, one may chase a thousand and to put 10,000 to flight. Will this thing eventually turn against us? Will this compass, you know, the compass, eventually point to Seventh day Adventists? We are seeing a holy crusade of the Roman Catholic Church right now. As they said, this was prophesied long ago that Russia was supposed to be consecrated to Mary because they did not do this. That's the reason why we see this uprising by Russia right now. Oh, brothers and sisters, that's their prophecy. Oh, listen carefully to what this says here. From the Catholic News Agency, Latvia, the country there, foreign minister, says the church, that's the Roman Catholic Church, must keep its moral compass. Moral compass? In other words, uh, its integrity. In other words, uh, maintain the truth. Is there truth in Roman Catholicism? Remember, the Bible calls this institution a harlot woman, Revelation 17, that the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Let's continue. The article goes on to say, Latvia's foreign minister, Edgars, believes that as war rages in Europe, the church, Roman Catholicism, has a fundamental task. What is that task? To keep the moral compass, not to let the world, what? Lose humanity, which is exactly what they're trying to do. He expressed great appreciation for Pope Francis' statements on the war. He stressed that the quote-unquote Holy See could be doing what? An excellent mediator if Russia and Ukraine agree. The kings of the earth have indeed committed fornication with her. 
They have made an alliance, an unholy alliance. Now they have given the beast an army as Justinian did. And keep in mind, United States of America is behind all of that. Revelation 13, 12 tells us, keep that in mind, that he caused the earth, the United States of America, to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Now we are experiencing the rise of the army of the Pope. Spiritualism, paganism are on the rise. False revival are on the rise. Another crusade war is coming against Seventh-day Adventists. This is a holy war. Listen now. Next, Our Lady, quote-unquote Our Lady of Fatima, pilgrim statue, arrives in Ukraine prior to March 25th consecration. A special statue of Our Lady of Fatima has arrived in Ukraine ahead of Pope Francis's consecration of the country and Russia to the Immaculate of Heart. We are talking about a Roman Catholic crusade. Now, crusade should come to your mind or the word should ring a bell in your mind, a crusade. Do you know your history? What they have done with their crusade against those who dare go against the Roman Catholic teachings? Have you read what they have done to the Waldensians, to the Huguenots, to many of God's faithful martyrs? Have you read? This is a crusade that's going on. Let's continue here. From life site, Fatima's simple call to prayer, sacrifice, and what else? Conversion needed during these tumultuous times as the Pope prepared to consecrate Russia. Pay close attention to Our Lady's message. Our Lady asks us to pray the rosary daily. Mm. To repent of our sins. To do what now? Penance. What else? To sacrifice for the conversion of sinners. To consecrate Russia to her immaculate heart. And to receive, quote-unquote, holy communion in reparation for sin. In return, she promises what now? Peace. Oh, that's a lot to digest here. In return, if you don't consecrate Russia to Mary, if you don't bow down to Mary, if you don't take the holy, quote-unquote, holy Eucharist, as it says there, to receive holy communion, what would happen? More wars. Holy communion. All of these things are connected with the Sunday law, brothers and sisters. Remember what the Pope says? Everyone must partake of the Eucharist. Keep Sunday holy and partake of the Eucharist to stop the calamities. Now to stop the war. There it is. It's right there from Laodato C. Point 237. On Sunday, our participation in the what? Eucharist has special importance. Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationship with God, with ourselves, and what else? With others and with the world. So we must consecrate Sunday as well to marry, keep it holy, and partake of the Eucharist. And if we do so, Mary, the so-called Mary, has promised peace. Is it peace, really? But we do have the truth. He is trying once again, as he has done in time past, to cast the truth to the ground. And Jesus, again, has been dethroned. We have now a new mediator. That is Mary, which is not really Mary. Listen carefully. This says, Pope Francis invites Catholics, bishops worldwide to join him in consecrating Russia, Ukraine. Do you understand what that means? Remember they said that the Pope cannot just consecrate Russia. The Pope, because other Popes have tried that, but they did not do it according to 
Our Lady has said it. This time, they said you have to do it right. How? By inviting all the priests, Catholic priests, all the Catholic bishops as one. No other pope has ever done it that way before. And they said, according to the prophecy, that's how Mary commended it. Otherwise, there will be more wars. So now the Pope is doing it as the prophecy has said to do it. Do you see what's happening here? What if we do not consecrate ourselves to Mary as Seventh Adventists? Do you see what's coming? It's a holy war. One more time. The article goes on to tell us here. In a letter sent urgently on March 17 to all U.S. bishops, the Apostolic Nuncio, to the United States, Archbishop Christopher Pierre revealed that Pope Francis intends to invite all Catholic bishops and priests around the world to join the act of consecration of Russia and Ukraine to the quote-unquote immaculate heart of Mary. Brothers and sisters, how far or how near are you to Jesus Christ? Well, it's just a question for you to ponder, to think about, because this is very serious what's taking place right now. The world is being offered to Satan right now. Because we want peace. That's the only thing they said that's going to stop the wars. That's going to prevent another World War III. Will that stop the wars? Well, do you believe the truth? Do you believe my Jesus? Well, my Jesus says in Matthew 24, listen again, Matthew chapter 24, he said that there will be wars and uh, rumors of wars. And he said, these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Then he said, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Then what will happen next? Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. This crusade of the Roman Catholic will turn against Seventh-day Adventists, true Seventh-day Adventists, who will not bow to Mary, who have refused to join the Pope in ecumenical movement, ecumenical gathering. The ones who have not bowed the knees to Baal, as the Bible mentioned. It's a crusade. You remember, as we showed you yesterday, when Zelensky spoke before Congress and uh, that shirt, which was an army shirt, by the way, he was wearing. And then you had uh, that iron cross symbol on it. And I'll talk more about this on the screen. You could see he is at the top and the Pope is also wearing the same Vatican Crusade Cross. Did you know that's what it was? It's a Vatican Crusade Cross. There's the Pope. There he is wearing the same thing. And remember, he has a new Nazi army. Hmm, I wonder who they will come after. It's a spiritual warfare, brothers and sisters. Another picture here. You could see Hitler with the cross there, the Vatican Crusade cross, the Pope there with the same cross, and there he is with the same cross. And if we look at in time past, the crusade, they use the same cross to go after whom? To go after Protestants. They wage war against Protestants. Well, there is the army, the neo-Nazi army that's in Ukraine right now, that the Pope has. New evidence reveals CIA trained armed Ukrainian Nazi paramilitary now leading the fight against Russia. That's the crusade, the army crusade that the Pope has right now. Do you see where we are? It's a spiritual warfare, brothers and sisters. Whom will they come after? Well, a little history for you. Listen carefully to what E.J. Wagner tells us here. 
You have heard of the Crusades, the wars of the cross, the wars of what? Of the cross, as they were called, which lasted for many years and in which much blood was shed and many lives were lost. But these wars had really nothing to do with the cross of Jesus. For when the Son of God goes forth to war, all the blood that he sheds is his own, which he pours out to save his enemies. Oh, praise God. That God did not go to war against us to annihilate us. No, he sent, as John 3, 16 tells us, his only begotten son to share his own blood so that whosoever believeth should not perish but have everlasting life. Brothers and sisters, what a loving God we serve. That is the true Christ, but the Antichrist. War is to shed innocent blood. Yea, is to go against those who will dare worship God in spirit and in truth. And they have told you clearly that this is a holy war. As we quoted before from the National Catholic Reporter, Pope Francis, in video conference with Russian Patriarch Kirill rejects religious defense of invasion. Russian Orthodox Patriarch Kirill, a key backer of Russian President Vladimir Putin's war against Ukraine. In the call, the two religious leaders pledged their respective commitment to securing again peace. Francis rejected the justification for the invasion as a holy war. He said, today we cannot speak like this. Oh, don't say that because I have done something like that in time past. It's not a holy war because as he goes on to say, we are Christians. We not for wars, really. But what saith the truth of God? What saith the Bible? It says here, Daniel 7, 24, verse 25. And the ten horns out of this kingdom, that is the pagan Rome kingdom, are ten kings, speaking of the divided of Rome, that shall arise and another, that another, that's the little horn, that's the papacy, shall rise after them. And he shall be diverse, papacy shall be diverse, from the first, and he shall do what? Subdue three kings, made holy war with the Vandals, the Herolites, and the Ostrogoths. He uprooted them. Well, we are for peace, the Pope says. This is not holy war. What he has done in the past, they are repeating it. But listen now. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out, that means make war with the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. That's 1,000 260 years he made war with God's people and notice the next one here Revelation chapter 13 verse 7 confirms this again and it was given unto him to do what to make war with the saints and to overcome them and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations and as we know Revelation 12 17 also says that he will make war with the remnant of the seed of the woman, which keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. We are next, brothers and sisters, in this war, this religious war that is going on right now between Russia and Ukraine, between the Orthodox churches and Catholicism. We are next. Are we ready? Listen to what we read here. The Walden Siena missionaries were invading the kingdom of Satan and the powers of darkness aroused to greater vigilance. Every effort to advance the what again? The truth was watched by the prince of evil and he excited the fears of his agents. The papal leaders saw a portent of danger to their cause because of the Waldensians from the labors of these humble 
itinerant, if the light of what again? Truth were allowed to shine unobstructed, it would sweep away the heavy clouds of error that enveloped the people. It would direct the minds of men to God alone and would eventually destroy the supremacy of Rome. So Rome made war against the truth because the truth is a threat to its supremacy, to its kingdom. That's how they tried to uproot the Waldensians, Protestants. Let's continue. The very existence of the Waldensians holding the faith of the ancient church was a constant testimony to Rome's apostasy and therefore excited the most bitter hatred and persecution. Their refusal, the Waldensians' refusal, to surrender the scriptures was also an offense that Rome could not tolerate. She, Rome, determined to blot them from the earth. Now began the most terrible, what's the word, crusades against God's people in their mountain homes. Inquisitors were put upon their track and the scene of innocent Abel falling before the murderous Cain was often repeated. And as Jesus says in the book of Luke, oh brothers and sisters, chapter 21, are we there again? Are we ready to be like the Waldensians? Listen now, chapter 21 of the book of Luke, verse 12, but before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and, to, and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. But it shall turn to you for a what? A testimony. A testimony to present the truth before many. Amen? So we must overcome the papacy, the world, the beast power by the blood of the Lamb. Listen to what we read here. From Revelation 17, 13, 14, these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall do what? Make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is Lord of lords and King of kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. So the Lamb shall overcome them, and they that are with the Lamb are called chosen. And what else? Faithful. Let us be faithful unto death, brothers and sisters. Amen? Victory is ours. In the name of Jesus, we are more than conquerors. Amen? Blessed Sabbath day to each and every one of you. And by God's grace, we will see you this Sabbath. And we pray and hope that you will receive a blessing and put ye on the whole armor of God because this war is coming down against Seventh-day Adventists. Let's pray. Loving Father, our God, which art in heaven, we want to thank you, Lord, for helping us to understand at least a little bit the truth. Lord, help us to love the truth, to practice the truth, and to share the truth with everyone. Father God in heaven, we pray that you would be with your people, strengthen us, give us wisdom from on high, and teach us what we must do as we see the world all around us is increasing in hostility towards the truth. We pray for the people in Ukraine and in Russia, especially your people there and the innocent ones. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen.